Welcome to Share Talk, the only podcast where investors come first. Hello and welcome today. I'm joined by Colin Bird, Executive Chairman at Besant Resources. How are you today, Colin? Good, thank you. You? Yeah. I'm, I'm doing fine. I, I noticed that you had a, an RNS out today and uh, uh, looks pretty decent. So maybe you can run through that. Well, um, the RNS came out because, you know, that um, I guess that when we announced the deal, that it was all a blanket um, York um, category um, resource without much specific information on drilling and what have you. And um, this really gets down to some of the boreholes in one of the drilling campaigns. And when I see 23 metres at 1.59, that, that's serious stuff. When I see 7 metres at 5.2%, 3% copper, with the gold of 1.37, I, I, you know, the gold um, the gold is big enough to support a mine. Likewise, um, we're on, let's go for some of the, yeah, 10.12 metres at 5.7.56 gold, 7 metres at 5.28 and 1.14. They're, they're serious results. So we're getting the point out there that, <clears throat> you know, if you go back a few years, copper and gold together were probably not that popular. They might have given you metallurgical problems, but, you know, I make the point there, you can get 96% of the copper out and 84% of the, of the gold. And that is an excellent concentrate grade of 28%. So excellent stuff, um, Zach, but... Uh, but you think, I mean, that's... I mean, it's, the, it's, the, the main thing sorry. here is, sorry, the main thing here is the quality of, of the resource. Um, the, the quality of the resource, yes, but next door, you know, is a mine called Gorob. And uh, Gorob, for some reason, has got similar uh, copper um, grades, and yet the gold doesn't appear. Then when we got stuck into the archives, it was a bit of a puzzle when we first looked at it. They didn't test for gold. So I'm pretty sure now that when we, we get into the gold there and drill in the Gorob, that we will find the gold-copper ratios are pretty much the same. And so the resource will be made bigger um, very quickly by, by drilling further holes at Gorob and, of course, testing for gold as well as copper. But the big thing here is, and I guess it's hidden somewhere, as they always are in these RSs, um, there's 150 kilometres, Zach, which has not been tested. And that's my target. Instead of having, you know, I would very, thank you very much, 10 million tonnes at, at your um, quality is um, nice to have, but 150 kilometres where we know that uh, mineralisation trend extends, um, that, that really is the big prize and the attractive prize. The chance that in, 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 a, in, a, in a metal which is very, very, very popular at the moment, copper, and I don't think gold's sitting in the doldrums either, um, the chance of 150 kilometres of repeating um, the sort of results we're seeing here. It's very, very exciting, very exciting tech. Right, I mean, you've got a market cap of, of less than two million at the moment on Besant. Um, that's right. That's um, right. But, but that's not, you don't actually have to dig uh, or find or uh, produce uh, a lot of metal in order to uh, justify that kind of, kind of market cap. What is what is the sort of the route to production, and what is the what's the journey that you're seeing? Well, this could be very quick into production. Um, so there's two 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 two, two um, activities going on together here. There'll be certainly you've got to you've got to prove up that um, gold at Garab, and then there's there's enough justification, enough gold to actually build a, a seven to ten thousand tons a, a year um, for, for ten years type operation, um, and then of course concurrent with that, not not ten years, but concurrent over the next year or so, is to get into that hundred and fifty kilometres with the with the possibility or the probability, because we do know that it's there's little workings dotted along the old 150 kilometres, and the proposition of turning this into a you know a big copper district that's 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 my ambition. Not talking about a little mine there with 10 million tons, um, beaver in a way. Very nice, thank you very much for the market cap of two million. That would be a very nice mine with a, with, with quite a long life and a very very cheap mining methods. Um, but no, the, the the ambition for the company is. Um, is to basically get into that 150 kilometres and find much of the same, and of course um, get some gold um, assays out of Gorob. Right, so that, that's the plan, yeah. and it's uh, you know, you know, Zach, year, years ago the airborne geophysics and um, junior mining companies mutually exclusive on cost, but nowadays that's not the case, and. Um, 
for not much more than hundred hundred and fifty thousand dollars, we'll be able to actually fly that hundred and fifty kilometers. So it's not going what the typical junior does: go to an old working and um, start, you know, start doing a bit of test work around there. It's really doing professional work, high grade technical work, to decide what next and where next, with an objective of growing this project with much of the same um, uh, in, in, in a metal which you know I firmly believe is only just starting to move, and it's not it's not bad to have gold in the in the in the same bed as well. Yeah, I'm just uh, we wanted to ask. I'm mean, just to underline really the you, we were talking offline about the, the quality of the uh, the copper resource. Uh, could you just under, you know just mention that um, you know so it's clear, let's say, for the audience. Well, the the, the copper values, as I say, that uh, at the moment, uh, well, at the moment over the last fifteen years, the average grade of copper has dropped from one point one three to point six two. And um, the worst result I see here is 1.14, and all our all our other figures are ones, sevens, and you know you will probably note when you look at the results, the longer the intersection, the lower the grade, but very significant at 1.47 is is two times um, the world average. So if it thins, it's extremely high grade. It's a mining width which is quite acceptable, and uh, where it goes wider. As I say, it's two times the average grade being worked um, around the planet. So these are superior grades. But as I said also again previously, that when you're talking about a 96% copper recovery, Zach, that's unusual. That is very good recovery. And a 28% copper grade is extremely good when you're normally looking at 16 to 22. So here we are with a concentrate grade grade of, of 28%. So, so that's great stuff. And, um, you know, that's... Uh, Conventional flotation. It's not sort of any 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 fancy metallurgical test work. So this is this is this is a very very good subject, and quite frankly, um, I'm I'm delighted that we picked it up for our shareholders. And and finally, just in, in t- I mean, it's obviously it was difficult to predict these things, but uh, seeing copper, it's about a third off, you know, thirty percent plus off the the lows of March. Um, how, you know, are you looking for a sort of a, a, a real breakout for the metal over the near term? Well, you know, um, the emergence of mankind, and okay, from Corona set it back for a couple of months, but the emergence of mankind means that the copper demand is, is obviously going to increase year on year. Electric vehicles, there's five times more copper used in the electric vehicle. Um, as I say, the, the disposable income around the world, uh, a redundant, um, obsolete um, power generation system in the States, uh, I mean, they are talking about 2030 doubling the demand for copper. If it goes up half as much again, uh, the demand, I don't know where it's going to come from. So I find it quite remarkable that copper is sitting at 5.4 when when we're probably in the middle. I mean, we, we like the thing we've got at the end of this virus. When we're in the middle of this, um, in, in the middle of this virus, it's, it's basically now about $600 higher than uh, the ton. When the buyer, when it started, and I'm merrily looking. You know, I really am very ambitious for the for this time next year for a seven thousand five hundred dollars a ton copper price, and you know, a combination of electric vehicles, a cleaner planet, just sheer demand for for um, for for for, for the, those, those items that um, work for copper. Um, it's not difficult to look at um, nine thousand um, dollars in 2023. It really isn't. Um, so delighted with them that copper has actually emerged. And as I say, no bad thing to have gold knocking along at the side of the copper, which is running, as we all know, at um, extraordinary highs. And uh, I guess if Donald Trump gets another term, that, that, that you know, with the geopolitical situations that he that manages to engender around the world, that copper can uh, gold can look forward to to similar levels. So, you know, as I say, the, the results we've got there is almost a gold, you know, you're almost looking at gold mine um, capability, but um, the, two to met, the two metals together is very, very good. Colin Bird, Executive Chairman at Besant Resources, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much, Zach. Thanks. Thank you for listening. Remember to visit our website for more news and other podcasts at www.share-talk.com.